If you're on the Discord or maybe follow on Twitter, you may know that I've been working on a small home server rack for an upcoming series. However, that project so far has been a total disaster with a lot of setbacks. Hopefully more to come on that soon. Luckily, Synology has reached out and come through to save the day by sending over an even smaller server and 32 terabytes of hard drives. This is the Disk Station DS920 Plus NAS. My name is Kyle and you're watching TechSquid TV. Quick note, Synology was kind enough to send this unit over for us to play with, but this is not a sponsored video and all opinions are my own. Let's get started. With a computer, some hard drives, and the right software, we can build our own personal cloud. Somewhat like Google's G Suite or whatever Microsoft happens to be calling their suite now. Maybe Office 365 by the time you see this? While it is possible to build our own machine and use open source software, and we will, today we are going to look at a completely out of the box commercial solution. The DS920 Plus is a really compact four bay NAS with a quad core Celeron and four gigs of DDR4 memory on board. Additionally, we can add another four gigs of memory and better yet, we can add up to two NVMe SSDs. In the disk station management software that comes with this NAS, we can configure these SSD drives as cache, which will automatically store frequently accessed files for improved read and write performance. Although we may have to test out how effective this actually is. I unfortunately do not have any on hand, but I plan to add them as soon as possible. We're gonna be using this machine mostly for editing these YouTube videos and having the project files cached could really come in handy with editing. A quick look at the back reveals dual gigabit LAN. This should come in useful sure if you're looking for network redundancy, but I'm curious to know if we can hook up our personal NAS to both the private internal network and potentially an additional VLAN that we set up. Stay tuned for an upcoming episode where we're gonna be sure to give that a shot. Let's add our drives. Synology was kind enough to send over these Seagate Ironwolf NAS drives, which is great because they're designed to operate in environments such as this, where we're going to be constantly reading and writing for our data on multiple hard drives. If you want to learn more about the CMR and SMR drive debacle and want some more information about which hard drives to buy, we'll have links in the description below. In general, if a drive says NAS directly on it, you should be safe. Speaking of storing your data across multiple drives, let's talk really quickly about how we intend to do that. RAID is a data storage technology that lets us take multiple physical hard drives and turn them into one or more virtual drives. Behind the scenes, the physical drives can be used in a number of different ways to trade off between speed, redundancy, and total storage space. Even though we put 32 terabytes of hard drives into the NAS, we don't actually want to use all of it for our data. We want to leave some of that space to create a backup of our data. Synology actually has a helpful RAID calculator, which I've used before in the past and does a really good job of explaining the different types of RAID configurations available given a set of hard drives. RAID works best when all your hard drives are of the same size, but there are options such as Synology's hybrid RAID for those who want to mix and match. Today though, we are going to be looking at four of the same hard drives, so let's take a quick look at RAID 5. RAID 5 requires at least three drives to work. Data will be split across the drives in the array, with one drive's worth of storage being used for redundancy. When data is written to a RAID 5 array, it is stored with parity information, which is calculated from the data on the other drives in the array. If one drive were to fail, the RAID array would have enough information in the remaining drives to recalculate the missing data. This gives us the benefit of reading our data faster as we can read from multiple drives at the same time, and we can back up our 24 terabytes worth of data using only eight terabytes of physical space. It's also important to note now, this type of backup protects your data across a single drive failure reasonably well. If there were two failed drives, that would be a problem. Or if there was a fire and the sprinklers went off or anything like that. There is a rule in backing up data called the 321 rule. Keep three copies of your data with two of them in different media and one of them being located off site. So to truly complete this backup strategy, we would need to also back up the data to the cloud or on a copy of a hard drive and store it in a friend's basement. The amount of data I have would be quite expensive to host in the cloud and you need to determine what your data is worth to you. If you are using a NAS like this to run your business, you need to also back up your data in the cloud. Call it a half review, call it an excuse to talk about NASAs, but this is actually something I've had my eye on for quite some time. It's very difficult or near impossible to build something yourself that is this small and this silent. I'm actually having enough trouble just trying to put together a rack server. If you're running any kind of business, it is absolutely imperative that you have a backup with at least one drive's worth of failure tolerance. Ideally, more than that. If you didn't need as much space as we used here, you may even dedicate more of that hard drive space to redundancy. 
I think Synology has the reputation, the resources, the guides, and everything you would need for that out-of-box experience that's really straightforward. And it's nice to have something go smoothly for once. If you're interested in any of the products we talked about here today and you want to support the show, check out the links in the description below. To talk more, join the Discord, press the like button, hit subscribe, click the bell, all the things, and we'll see you next time.